All right, so welcome. This is uh, maximizing Sirius XM weather service on a Raymarine display. We're gonna take about 45 minutes to an hour here. Uh, if you have a pen and paper handy, that might, uh, might come in handy. We will provide you several resources. We're gonna give you some contact information, some website information. Uh, and if not, we will record this webinar and we will be sending it out to everybody who's registered. Uh, so stand by for that in the upcoming days. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm Jeff Leach uh, with SiriusXM Marine, also with Dan from SiriusXM Marine. We are based both based out of the Washington, D.C. office. And we have Jim McGowan from Raymarine. Thank you for being with us tonight, Jim. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Also uh, with SiriusXM Marine and with Raymarine is our co-pro ambassador, Rob Lapola from Strike2 Fishing Team. Uh, Rob, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you. And so if anybody has questions for Jim uh, about your Raymarine hardware or about uh, service or some setup, feel free to chat those, as well as Rob, who is out on the water all the time and using the SiriusXM weather service uh, literally daily. Um, if you have any questions and want to know more about um, you know, how he uses it, how he gets the most out of it, Rob will chime in here periodically, but feel free to chat him as well. All right. So for those of you who are not current subscribers, what makes Sirius XM Marine Weather different is this is up-to-date graphical weather information displayed directly on your Rain Marine chart plotter. Uh, so big screen right in front of your face, not contingent on cell signal, not contingent on internet. This is satellite delivered service. And if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, this is our coverage map. So the light blue shaded area is roughly our coverage area. And um, that is, you know, roughly about 150 nautical miles offshore surrounding North America. All right, so where does this data come from? We've partnered with the Weather Channel Company, otherwise known as TWC. And TWC aggregates data from NOAA and various other sources sends it to us, we send it up to our satellites and then broadcast it down <clears throat> to your boats. Um, data has different update rates. So there is slight latency in that delivery system. Storm radar and lightning takes every two to five minutes. Wind and wave information is delivered every 20 minutes and sea surface temps uh, for you, those of you that's important to uh, is delivered every three hours. Okay. Yeah. So let's get started here talking about the basics. On the Raymarine, on the new Axiom series, you're going to click on the chart button. And from there, you want to go to your menu screen. It's going to bring up your normal navigational chart. Uh, and you're going to want to have the weather button turned on. That little green checkbox there indicates that it's turned on. And then we always like to recommend that you go into settings and then select weather. And on the weather page at the bottom, you can see what your signal strength is. So you know if you've got signal, the weather's gonna be coming in, in in the times that we mentioned. And also right there is your receiver ID number. If those two things aren't present, then there's a problem. Um, if, if those are present and you're still not getting weather data, then uh, you may need to do what we call a refresh, uh, which is uh, we send a signal to your unit basically to wake it up, say if it's been dormant for the winter. Uh, so this is a quick and easy way to find that ID number, which is always the first thing we ask for when anybody calls us. So getting back to the chart page, going back to the menu, to start looking at the weather layers, we select here and it brings up our list of all the, all the layers. Uh, weather radar is the first thing that we're gonna go take a look at. So zoomed in here on the Florida, we can see there's some precipitation going on and the, the intensity of the storm is uh, shown by the different colors. The, uh, the dark red is the, the most severe part of the storm and then it goes from orange to yellow to, to dark green and then on out to light green. So we can see how the, the storm, where, where the worst parts of a storm are and, and hopefully get around them and stay dry. Uh, in addition to showing you just a static picture that updates every couple of minutes when we send a, a new, new position information for the precipitation, you can also animate your weather. 
Uh, Ray Marine gives you the ability to go back a couple of hours to see how the storm's been moving. So when you select the animate key, like you see here, there's a, there's a play button up at the top and you hit that play button and it takes you through the, uh, the cycle of how the rain has been moving. So you can see which direction it's been going. Next, we're gonna talk about the city information. We're just gonna be going down through this weather layer list so you can see all the features. So the city information basically takes your, your, your larger cities that are, are putting out a several day forecast and that puts a symbol on the screen there that looks kind of like skyscrapers. And you can select one of those symbols and then you get this pop-up window. And from the pop-up window, you can choose the specific symbol that you, you, you've selected. And it will give you the forecast going out several days for that particular location. So it's just kind of an overview of the weather's going to be doing from a, a major municipality near you. So that's the first section. Um, okay. We'll stop there. Yep. Let's see if we have some question here. Um, doesn't look like there's anything specific on this question on this section. Um, if for whatever reason you are not a Ray Marine customer. Um, we do have uh, resources available, other webinars you can view, uh, and that's SiriusXM.com forward slash marine webinars. You can see past recordings. And just as a reminder for everybody on this call, we will be recording this webinar. We are recording this webinar, and we will send you, everybody who registered for this webinar, a link to it so you can watch it again at your leisure as, uh, as desired. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, next thing we're going to go and take a look at from the layers is cloud tops. So cloud tops is, is, is uh, several different names. Sometimes it's referred to as satellite mosaic, but basically it's the image of the, 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 uh, the clouds. And you can see there are varying shades of gray and you can actually go in and click on uh, a spot and bring up the, uh, the weather info. And you can see the uh, height of the top of the cloud. Uh, a lot of the people that are, are uh, like the meteorology side of the weather uh, like to keep an eye on that. Next, we're going to go talk about lightning. Uh, and this, in addition to the precipitation, is probably the most uh, used layer, weather layer that we have. Uh, Ray Marine is unique in the way that they display lightning because they actually give you an indication of the uh, age of the strike. And uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting here, I'm going to turn on lightning and weather radar. So here was a better example. We're seeing both of these things at the same time. And of course, they do you know, quite ha often happen at the same time. An interesting thing about lightning, though, the actual range of lightning that we can gather lightning data from extends farther than radar. The, the radar precipitation image that we get from the National Weather Service, NEXRAD radar is what it's referred to as, has about 185 mile range from the transmitting stations and they're up and down the US coast. Beyond 185 miles, we can't see precipitation, but we can see lightning. So you might see, say if you're in the Bahamas, you might see a lightning storm way out beyond radar range and I always say, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. So if you see a, a cluster of lightning strikes, kind of like you see here, you can expect there's rain there too. And the lightning strikes will be moving. That you'll see these, uh, there's a bright yellow strike, and then there's a, a lighter colored and a, and, a, and a darker colored strike. The darker ones are the older ones. So these are all strikes that have occurred within about the last 15 minutes. And then after 15, they, they fade off. So they're not shown anymore. So these are all recent strikes that are showing. So that's kind of a nice feature to be able to see even beyond radar range if there's storm activity about. Dan, this is a, this is a feature that we really live by on the, uh, with the lightning and the, uh, the weather layer there. It's critical for us when we're trying to, uh, when we're out fishing in a tournament or we're, even when we're pleasure fishing, it gives us, the opportunity to find safety if we need to by looking at the, the lightning strikes and the intensity of it. And it gives us a, uh, an idea of a way to get back to safety if we need to without any issues. 
Yeah, I agree. I think there's nothing more than intimidating watching a strike hit the water not too far from where you are. A lot of times, another advantage here, a lot of times it's a lot farther away than it looks. At least here you can kind of look at it and go, okay, that's, I, I don't, I, you know, I know I need to run, but here's the direction I need to run and here's how far away it is. Oh, I can handle just about anything, but lightning, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> where, if there's, if there's lightning, we're moving. And there this, you go. <laughs> this, this has saved our butt many times. And uh, it's just a, an incredible feature, and it's a it's a definite must. Okay. So moving on, we're going to go back to our layers and take a look at uh, our next favorite feature, which is sea surface temperature. Those of you that are fishermen, or perhaps cruisers that are planning on uh, heading for the Bahamas, uh, knowing where the Gulf Stream is can be a big advantage because that's a current that's moving. And to be able to see where the edge of that is. And this is an example that was taken. Uh, this is the Gulf Stream this time of year, how it looks coming up the coast. That bright orange area that you see, that's the Gulf Stream. And you can actually take your cursor and set it on a spot on screen. And again, here, ask for weather info. And it's going to give you the actual temperature where you put the cursor. So you're seeing the exact temperature where you located it. And of course, as fishermen, we like to find the edge of that break. And you can see right along in there where that orange is, we can see that water is 79 degrees. So it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a break occurring right at that location. The, uh, the color spectrum for what the temperatures mean uh, also is, is uh, shown in the Ray Marine manual. Uh, so if you're curious about what all the individual colors mean, you can go to the, the manual to pull that information up. So next, we're gonna go talk about wind information. So these are wind barbs. These indicate both the speed and the direction of the wind. And the way it works is they, uh, the circle with the dot is light and variable. That means there's, there's virtually no wind at all. Um, if the dot has little tick marks on the end, uh, those tick marks denote the speed. So here we're looking, it's got three tick marks, two longs and a short. So the, on this one, the wind is 25 knots and it's out of the south southwest. So the, the, it basically you can see the direction of the wind uh, as well as the speed all in one indication. And then down here, we've got uh, five knot winds out of so the way I like to describe it is the, the barb is pointing into the wind, if you will. The little dot at the end is basically your fixed point and it points into the wind and then shows you the speed at the end the wind is coming from. You can also, if you choose, change the wind symbol by going into the weather settings and selecting arrows instead. However, with the arrows, you don't quite get as good an indication of the, the speed because the, uh, the arrow will change size. So you get some relative information of the speed, but not quite as graphic as you do with the wind bar. Okay, we're gonna take another break. Do we have any questions, Jeff? Yep, uh, one question, and it's, it's about coverage area, Dan, if you could feel this. Um, any plans to expand coverage over Bermuda or from Bermuda to the Virgin Islands? Uh, we do have coverage, satellite coverage to Bermuda. What we don't have to Bermuda is a weather reporting source out there that we can get good information from at this time. Uh, but I do have some people that have crossed over to Bermuda and told me they had weather service all the way. Uh, as far as the Bahamas, we have coverage down to just shy of Turks and Caicos right now you lose signal about 20 miles west of Turks and Caicos. Uh, some of you may have heard we launched a new satellite uh, this past winter and unfortunately it failed. Um, and we will be launching another satellite this summer. With the launch of that new satellite, we hope to pick up coverage in the Puerto Rico area and the US Virgin Islands as well. Uh, and we do have good weather coming out of Puerto Rico, so we will be able to give good information for that area. All right, thank you, Dan. So keep the questions coming. 
Um, and remember, use the chat feature to keep them coming, please. Okay, moving on, we're gonna go back to our layers menu and select watch boxes. Uh, these are a critical safety element. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're not always paying attention to the weather, if you don't wanna have the weather screen up all the time, um, if you need to go take a quick look though, uh, when there is severe weather that's going to happen in a specific area, NOAA puts out a broadcast uh, you probably a lot, most of you have heard it on the VHF radio where they come on and they, they announce there's a, a safety broadcast that's coming. Um, well, instead of having to listen to that on the radio, uh, you can simply call it up here on your Raymarine screen and then you select that red area and uh, it will give you an option to look at the watch box data. And there you can see what it is they're talking about, what's happening in that area. So again, critical safety information. Next, we're gonna talk about wave height. Uh, we give you three pieces of wave information on the Raymarine, uh, but you cannot look at all of them at the same time. Uh, you can look at wave height and wave direction or wave period and wave direction. Uh, and the reason you can't look at all three at the same time is because uh, we use the color on the screen to show you the information with Raymarine. So here we're looking at wave height, for example. So we've got, it's running from dark red to green, to blue, to light blue. Uh, and basically you can click anywhere on screen and you can see what that information is. Now, when you, when you select it this way, you get all three pieces of information, but we can see here in that bright red area, the wave height was, was 16 and a half footers. Uh, if we move the cursor, I've moved it over here. Uh, we can click on it again, and you can see the, the wave height in that area is, is four and a half footers. So basically the scale is dark blue, which is one foot or less, and then it goes all the way up to red, which is you know 20, you probably don't wanna be there, 20 footers or so. Now, again, here, we also have wave period. So this is shown in, in color format as well. So again, I've clicked on, we've got a smaller red area here, I've clicked on it and we can see that our wave period is 19 seconds. So the waves are 19 seconds from top to top. Next, we're gonna to go to wave direction. So very simple here, bringing up an arrow information, giving you the direction of the waves. So now uh, we're gonna stop for questions for a minute, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about wind and wave forecasting. So do we get any more questions yet, yeah, Jeff? We, we did, actually. Um, here is a question for you. Why is weather and temperature, and this is one we hear often, why is the weather and temperature chart data and image so pixelated compared to other providers? Yeah, that's because Raymarine actually uh, utilizes our raw data and shows it on screen just the way that we're getting it from the weather service. Uh, some of the other companies actually smooth that data to make it look better, but it loads in inaccuracies. So this is the real deal. This is what you're seeing. The edge is where the edge is. It's not been modified in any way, shape or form. It's basically the, the data that we're the raw, it's basically a representation of the raw data and it hasn't been modified to make it look nicer. It is more pixelated than you would see on your phone when you're using the internet. That's because the internet can broadcast much higher resolution imagery than we can via satellite sending an image to a little three inch antenna on your boat. If you wanna put a, a six foot dish on your boat, then you could get higher resolution imagery, but it would also cost a lot more. Um, this is, it, it's, it's a compromise, but we feel that the data you're getting is, is, you know, is sufficient to get the job done with the parameters we have. Dan, next question. Do you have good wave information on the Great Lakes? Yes. Uh, newer models, older ones, they didn't always have uh, the wave information, but uh, anything that's been in production uh, in the last, oh, I'm going to say five years or so, if you've got a Raymarine SR 150, you can get wind and wave information for the Great Lakes. Uh, the SR 150 being the, the uh, previous model uh, Sirius XM weather receiver. Uh, receivers prior to that, 
Um, not the wind, the wind wave information wasn't as good. There was, still was some, but it wasn't as high resolution as we are able to provide now. By the way, we are going to talk about hardware and Jim McGowan can answer any specific questions about hardware as we get closer to the end of this uh, presentation this evening. We're also going to provide some support information, so contact information. So if you have specific information that may not be germane to the rest of the people on the call, um, you, can, you can specifically reach out uh, to the contact support information. Um, Dan, here's one more. Uh, you mentioned parameters. What are the parameters that limit capability? I'm not sure I understand that uh, question. Maybe, uh, Mark, if you could provide some more detail on that, a uh, little more context on that uh, question, that would be helpful. Thank you. All right, should we keep moving along? Oh, okay. Uh, there was a point made earlier too about um, about the fact that we show snow and ice as well for the northern folks in the northern latitudes, which we don't hear often, but certainly <laughs> uh, is worthwhile. That is correct. That is correct. Snow, ice, uh, even uh, uh, the storm attributes uh, talk about uh, uh, hail and other conditions. Didn't so, you even speak to somebody, Dan, who had mounted one on their snowmobile at uh, SR 150? <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know about snowmobile. <laughs> I did, we do actually uh, storm chasers, the tornado ch chasers throughout the Midwest install them on vehicles. Um, and uh, we, uh, we hear from them quite a bit. Um, so uh, getting back to uh, the wind and wave information, not only do we give you current conditions, but we also put a, a computer model forecast into the feed. Um, and that's available uh, for wind and wave information. And so this, this is an example that I have here up on screen. Um, and we also include the uh, surface pressure, which we'll, we'll bring that up in a minute. So here again, we've gone back to the animation page and instead of selecting history, which would have given us the, uh, the precipitation information, uh, we've selected forecast here. So it's giving us our wind forecast and you can see it's been progressing out from uh, current condition time out 12, 24, 36 and it will run out to 48 hours. So that's your wind information. And then here, uh, we've selected wave period. So you can see the wave period information changing over the time period. And uh, Jim, I think you had a comment about wind and wave conditions, or I'm sorry, not Jim, but- uh, Rob, uh, Rob. Yeah, uses wind and wave apparently. Rob, are you on? Yes, yeah, one of the things that we like to do, you know, not even when there's a storm or anything like that, but we, I, I like to use the wind and wave uh, mainly to protect, uh, project uh, how the, how the uh, seas are gonna be like going into a harbor, you know, as far as uh, I'll use the wind direction to, if it's, if it's a strong wind, I can use the wind direction to my advantage to, you know, ride closer to land, to have really, you know, possibly block the, uh, block the wind. Or I also use it to determine, helps determine what, you know, was safe uh, inlet to go in because, you know, the last thing I want to do is avoid a, uh, an outgoing tide with a strong incoming, you know, sea or strong wind. And uh, it allows us to plan, you know, safety. Right. I know there's been once or twice where I've actually been out where you could get out multiple inlets. And we've made the call to go in a different inlet on the way back in that we came out due to the weather conditions. Yes, we've, or, done, or, we've done that a lot of times. Yeah, or just approaching the inlet. You know, if, if you're going to come up from the, you need to know if you should be coming up from the south or coming up from the, uh, the north or whatever so you don't get all beat up. Well, exactly. By looking at the wind, there's been times where I've run 20 miles out of my way just to get closer to land just so I can ride safely and faster, you know, to, a, uh, to a, the closest port. That's right. Open it up so you don't and not take a beating. Exactly. Um, an another thing, this screen that we're looking at now, you know, it's showing both your wind and your wave information at the same time. Um, that's, you know, at a glance, we can see if wind and wave is running the same direction uh, as opposed to if the, the wind and waves are running different directions like they are here. Here, the waves 
are, are out of the, the southeast and the wind is out of the southwest. So that's going to be choppy because they're, they're, they're beating up against each other already. Um, so these are, these are nice pieces of information to be able to have. And also to know, you know what it's going to be doing three hours or six hours from now when you're going to be heading back in. So that's the, uh, the advantage of the, the forecasting information. Dan, can we, you mind if I interject and just pause to answer, uh, have you answer a few sure. questions? Um, the question was, how often is this data updated? Yeah, so the, uh, the near shore data within about uh, 20 miles of shore is updated every 20 minutes. Uh, that includes Great Lakes as well. And then offshore, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, information is updated. The, I'll, I'll say the, uh, the current information is still updated every 20 minutes. But the, uh, the forecast information is updated every hour. And then the 24-hour uh, forecast is updated every two hours. So it's the longer the forecast, the longer we're waiting before we, we update it. All right, let's move along. And I can, we can pause for additional questions here in a bit. OK, so going back into the settings here for a minute, uh, now we're going to go take a look at the marine zone information. So we turn this on and you see all these lines come up on screen. These are your NOAA marine zones. And we've all listened to that lovely broadcast on the VHF radio, that garbled computer voice that is telling us the weather. But it doesn't tell us the weather for just one zone. It may cover, for instance, the, the whole state of New Jersey, the multiple zones. And, and me, I know many times I've been listening to that zone forecast and I invariably get distracted the minute they're going to talk about my area. And then I got to wait 20 minutes for it to come back around to tell me what it's going to be for my area. Well, the advantage here is you don't have to do that. You can simply put the cursor on a zone that you want to read the weather for and you can select the zone and you can select reports and you can just read it. Uh, there's your marine zone forecast. There's also any warnings that might be occurring as well. You can key on one of those up at the top and read the information. It's a lot easier to read it than to listen to that garbled voice on the VHF, in my opinion. This is very useful because if you're fishing in different zones, it could determine, you know, a, a zone 20 miles from another zone could be completely different forecasts and you could be a lot safer fishing in a, in a, in a zone 10 miles. Absolutely. It's a good way to plan ahead for sure. We yeah, think, think about too, Rob, the, um, and Dan, the, the, all the cruisers on the call or sailors on this call. I mean, if you're going from one port to the next and it could be, a, you know, hundred miles plus away, kind of nice to know what, uh, what that zone report up ahead is, is providing for you. Correct. And the other thing is, our, we talked about our forecast modeling information that goes out 48 hours. And, and, and that's not very far, but that's because that's, that's real time. We're like to show you the graphic imagery. Uh, your marine zone forecasts typically go out seven days, five to seven days. So there you're, that's your long range information, as opposed to your quick reference uh, computer animation imagery. Anything else? Yeah, Dan, a question was asked about how long does it typically take to provide the initial load or to boot up and, and start showing features? And right. I, know, I know that varies. But. It varies a little bit, um, but typically, uh, again, our, our weather data is in a queue. So lightning shows up about every three minutes. Uh, radar shows up about every five minutes and winds every 20 minutes in there. So it's in a queue. So um, you typically you wait, I'd say no longer than five minutes for the first start stuff to start showing up. And then it could take up to an hour for all of it to load. Okay, we, um, here's another question for you, Dan. Um, any plans to include Gulfstream current speed information? We have at, been asked about doing that uh, and we're looking at it, but there are, several other sources that already do that as well. There's, you know, there's some, I, uh, and, 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 and Jim, I might need your help on this one. Is there a, uh, is there a current or a, a, a tide uh, function on the Axiom series? I don't remember. Um, so they do have native tides and currents built in. And that's basically the tide tables is put out by the, by NOAA and the National Ocean Service. 
So it can calculate that way. Um, there are some additional internet third-party apps for tides and currents that are available through Axiom's uh, apps menu um, that probably has some information on that too. Right, that's what I thought. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, Dan, not sure if you'll be able to field this one, but uh, Jim uh, does most of his sailing in the San Francisco Bay. What type of range as far as nautical miles should I use to get the best results on the wind vectors? Um, it doesn't matter. They, they retabulate depending on what you've zoomed in on. The actual uh, granularity of the wind information, uh, haven't been asked that one in a while. I believe it's two kilometers, either one or two. We'll have to look that one up. <laughs> okay. I'll have to let you know for sure. But it's, the granularity is one or two kilometers. Here's another one. Um, can the animation be more precise for the first 24 hours? For example, current three hours, six hours, 12 hours, and 18 hours. That's, 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 that's what we have it set at. Uh, there's no plans to change it at this time. Okay. And how about Great Lakes storm warnings? Um, so I used, the, I had a Great Lakes, that was Lake Michigan, we used as an example for the storm warning uh, that I had up a while ago. The information is in the feed. All right. Um, and one more just popped up. The tide current speed would be great to have when outside internet access, when you can't use third party apps. I agree, yeah. Having it in the satellite feed would certainly be uh, very, very handy to have because a lot of times if you're gonna be out in the Gulf Stream, you're gonna be well beyond any kind of uh, internet connectivity unless you have a gigantic and expensive antenna. <laughs> As I said, we are looking at, so we'll yep. see. Noted, I just took another note yeah. on that to talk <laughs> about uh, future developments. <laughs> All right, great questions, keep them coming. Jim, you wanna cover the uh, hardware slide? Sure, yeah. So the piece of hardware that we're looking at here is the Raymarine SR200. That is our latest generation uh, Sirius XM marine receiver. Uh, this works with all of our Lighthouse 3 products. Uh, so to use this particular receiver, you do need to be either on our Axiom series hardware uh, running Lighthouse 3.9 or later. Uh, it does also work with our ES and GS series hardware, which is one generation older. Um, as long as you have upgraded them to Lighthouse 3, that was an optional update for those systems. Um, it's a pretty neat system. It's very easy to install. It does, uh, with a single receiver, give you both your marine weather feed as well as your satellite radio. Um, Connection-wise, um, there is a high-speed Raynet Ethernet connection that ties it into the network. Uh, there's a power cable for it, and then there is the antenna connector, and there is uh, an analog stereo audio output that you can connect up to your boat's audio system um, if you're using the uh, uh, satellite radio functions. Okay. Um... All right, if there's specific questions about your equipment or display, again, we'll have, um, we'll stick around at the end and we'll also yep. have contact information for, um, for support. Um, as far as the equipment, so as Jim mentioned, the SR200 is an officially a Ray Marine receiver uh, that receives Sirius XM weather service. Uh, its list price is 449 for the receiver. Uh, and even though Sirius XM is not the hardware provider, we do provide a rebate. So uh, if you buy a new SR200, subscribe to our service, uh, you will qualify uh, for $100 Sirius XM rebate. And we simply send you a Visa gift card. Uh, so in that last all the way through this year, through uh, December 31st, 2021, to find that rebate information, go to SiriusXM.com forward slash marine rebate. Uh, we also have, for anybody who has not signed up yet, uh, a two-month trial offer on our mid-tier of weather. So that's called our coastal tier of weather. Um, we have a two-month trial of that, and it does come with uh, radio as well. And to find out about our special offers, go to SiriusXM.com forward slash marine offers. So we'd be remiss if we didn't mention what really got SiriusXM on the map and brought us to the game in the first place. And that is our fantastic radio 
uh, services. Uh, as I assume quite a few of you already have and are listening to our radio in your cars, and we appreciate that and hope you're enjoying it. Um, the SR200 uh, and, and other Raymarine receivers from the past do still provide uh, Sirius XM radio. Um, you can add it to your exact same subscription. Uh, and if you do, you get roughly a 30% savings. Um, most of you may or may not know this, but even if you're an audio subscriber in your car, the vast majority of our service uh, subscription tiers also come with access to the streaming app. Um, so you just download the, the uh, SiriusXM app on your phone, you plug in your credentials, and voila, you've got, uh, you got streaming. And, uh, and you can actually search for different channels, interviews, and radio stations on demand, which is fantastic. I use it all the time. So, um, all right. Yeah, so that's kind of like it's, it's kind of like having two subscriptions in one too. One person could be listening to Sirius XM satellite delivered on the boat, and another person could be in the next state using their phone and and you know on the same subscription, both be listening to Sirius XM. So let's talk a little bit about how it comes through. So uh, again, if you have the SR two hundred aboard, you can have weather, you can have radio at the same time, and you run your stereo head unit. Uh, through your Raymarine uh, chart plotter, and then you would control Sirius XM radio, radio over your MFD. All right. One one nice thing about this with the Raymarine is is you, you, is once you get to the channel you like, you don't have to leave the Raymarine turned on. You can power down your display, and the music will continue to play. So you're not burning up battery power by having your display up and running. Comes in kind of handy when you're at anchor. Uh, the uh, SR200 will work with just about any stereo. You don't need a stereo that's Sirius XM ready. Uh, Raymarine does, does work with stereos that have NMEA capabilities. So you can get a little bit more control that way. Uh, but basically all your stereo really needs is an auxiliary in, just like if you were plugging in an iPad or a CD changer or anything else. The uh, audio out on the SR200 goes to that auxiliary in on your stereo. All right, just a basic overview on our various packages. Uh, the aforementioned coastal package, which is our, uh, our lower tier of service is uh, $35 uh, a month. And then the offshore tier, uh, which extends forecasts out further and has a wider range of sea surface temperatures beyond 20. 24 nautical miles, those are primarily the differences in offshore and coastal, is $59.99 a month. As I mentioned, if you add our entertainment, you get it to the same subscription, you get it at a discount, roughly 30% discount. Um, we did want to mention to everybody, we know there's some folks in the northern latitudes, also people, even if you're in the southern latitudes, not always using your boat, or your boat's on the hard, or you're getting work to it, or you've taken a break from your boat, we encourage everybody to seasonally suspend as opposed to deact. So if you're not using your boat for a series of time, a period of time, there's no sense in paying for the service. Simply call in uh, and seasonally suspend. And you can seasonally suspend for up to six months and more or less just puts your account in escrow on hold. You actually select a date when you call in that you want us to refresh or send a refresh signal to wake your system back up. Uh, that refresh signal will go out automatically. You don't have to call back in. You don't have to pay a reactivation fee. So we really encourage people to seasonally suspend uh, their services if they're not using it. All right, simple steps to activate. First and foremost, purchase or confirm you have compatible, compatible hardware. Choose your subscription package that we just reviewed and visit SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Activate or call this specific number. This is a pain point for people. So I'm pointing out specifically this number. Right? And we do have several numbers that get directly to our Marine and Aviation Division. But if you call our general 1-800 number just by going to SiriusXM.com, um, you uh, may be talking to a call agent uh, who is not familiar that we, with the fact that we have Marine and Aviation Services. So yeah, please one, specifically one call that number. One caveat here, Jeff, I will mention, um, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, our marine call centers 
uh, were uh, closed on the weekends. We're hoping to open those back up on the weekends right now, but, but currently, if you do call in on the weekend, you may call this number, but it might get diverted to somebody, hopefully, who can help you out. Um, but otherwise, uh, you can uh, wait until a weekday to give us a call. We're also, there's going to be another email here that coming up at the end. You can always contact us at support. Uh, there, is, there is support over the weekend. I'm sorry, Jeff. No problem. I just was reading through some of the chat while you were talking, and it sounds like uh, quite a few people in the car are actually using radio aboard, which is great. It's nice to have uh, satellite delivered service and not just be listening to your trying to find a radio station somewhere out there or or listen to your old playlist, which I've certainly experienced myself. It gets old fast. Um, some resources for everybody on the call. Uh, we have our main Marine website, SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine. We also have a dedicated video library. I really encourage people to go here. This houses uh, informational uh, videos, much like this webinar will be housed there. Uh, How-to videos, other informational uh, videos, and that's SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Library or just our general YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash, forward slash Sirius XM Marine. And we do encourage everybody to follow us on social media. We wanna see your pictures. Um, we, we wanna hear from you. Uh, and that's facebook.com forward slash Sirius XM Marine or at Instagram, which is at Sirius XM underscore Marine. All right, as I mentioned a little while ago, we do have a support, a direct support service. Uh, and if you have any questions about your Sirius XM Marine service, if you're having issues or if you have questions, feel free to reach out, uh, marine.support at SiriusXM.com. And as far as Ray Marine, uh, go to raymarine.com forward slash support if you need any tech support. Jim, remind us uh, of the number for Raymarine, the call support number, if you have that handy. Yeah, our main number is 1-800-539-5539. Uh, 